everyone, it's Anya here from the blog ourgiveofhome.com and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can make sauerkraut. Now sauerkraut is fairly easy to make, however I want to introduce you to two different recipes, um, also how you can influence the taste and texture of your sauerkraut, most importantly how you can increase the beneficial bacteria in the sauerkraut. So if you're just here because you like the taste of sauerkraut, that is one thing, but if you are interested in the health benefits of sauerkraut, then you might be very interested in this particular tip that I have. Any little ideas around sauerkraut and my favorite tools that I use for it, I'm gonna show you my favorite quick hack to make sauerkraut. And then if you enjoy this video and you have any other questions or ideas for me to make a video on, please leave me a comment in the box below this video. I'd love to hear from you what you guys are interested in because I love to do anything and everything in the kitchen and especially if I know that it helps you and it educates you and it entertains you. If you are actually enjoying this video, I always love it if you give me a thumbs up and it means the world to me if you're new here and hit the subscribe button. Also turn on the bell notification so that you never miss another video. And so let's get to it. Here's a jar of sauerkraut that I recently made and if you're wondering what the gray here at the top is that is not mold. That is actually a river rock that I found that I use as a fermentation weight. I sterilize them and I wash them after every use. It keeps the sauerkraut down and this one is going to go for longer fermentation. Let me show you my favorite equipment for making sauerkraut and I'm gonna move this over here. I always love a big bowl. I enjoy using an enamel bowl because it is non-reactive. You can use a glass bowl or you could use a wooden bowl. This is my favorite one. And here's a quick little tip. I always love these little kitchen hacks that I did. Um, I'm gonna talk about salinity of the sauerkraut. There's some water in here and it is a percentage of what your kraut weighs. So when I put this on my kitchen scale and I have my sauerkraut in there, I have to somehow subtract the bowl. What I have done is I have weighed out the bowl and I know that the bowl weighs 396 grams. I wrote that on the bottom. So that's always there. Talking about weight, it is always a good idea to use a kitchen scale. Again, I'll be talking about a method that uses the weight and the 2% and a kitchen scale, but there's also another method that's a little bit more rule of thumb and probably how they would have done it 200 years ago because I don't think they were using scales 200 years ago. Then I have pretty much one of the only few pieces of plastic in my kitchen this mandolin slicer that I've had for over 20 years. It comes with different attachments. This one makes tiny, um, almost like matchsticks, and this one makes slices. I will be using both of these for my sauerkraut today. Then, of course, we need some mason jars. You'll be surprised how little you may actually need because we're pressing the kraut down into the mason jars, but I have three here. We'll see how it goes. I can always get some more. I do have some proper fermentation weights. I just washed these so they're still a little wet, but I also have some more river rocks that I have sterilized and sanitized so that they are not introducing any foreign bacteria into my sauerkraut. So we'll be using those. I have a funnel so I can get everything into the mason jars. What else do I have? I have several different types of fermentation tops. I have this one that will let gases out. There's a little slit in it right here. And this one is just a regular valve. It has water in here so it lets 
gases out but doesn't let air in so i'm going to use i only have one of these and i'm going to use this one too and then i have some gloves because i will be making one recipe that involves red cabbage but most of all red beets and while i love red beets and I don't necessarily mind getting the red beet color on my hands. I sometimes prefer not to have to worry about it, not run around with red hands. So that is where my gloves come in. And then a good knife, but I'm sure every good kitchen has a good knife. Now talking about this little kitchen hack that I mentioned earlier, here it is. If you have a Trader Joe's close to you, you may have seen that they have bagged pre-shredded cabbage. They have a white cabbage and then they have this shredded green and red cabbage blend with carrots, which I will be using for my first recipe. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the um, red cabbage beet and I'm adding ginger to it. So we'll start with this one first. My little kitchen hack here, I'm using the pre-shredded cabbage. And yes, I know it's not quite as good and fresh as if you buy um, a head of cabbage, but sometimes when you're short on time and you're just not into slicing and shredding a whole head of cabbage, this can be a really quick fix. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have three packages here that I will dump into my bowl. I told you earlier that I know that my bowl weighs 396 grams. So now I can set it on here and weigh out how much cabbage I have. So 1,204 grams. So I have about 818 grams of cabbage and 2% salinity is ideal for making cabbage. Now, I will say that you can use a little bit less salt that will make your cabbage a little bit softer and you can use just a tiny bit more salt that will keep your cabbage a little bit more crunchy. In today's recipe, I will be adding a little bit of whey that I have left over from making quark. So I can use a little bit less salt. Now, if you do not have a kitchen scale, if you're not into measuring, and usually I'm not either, you can also salt your cabbage and go by taste. If your cabbage tastes salty, saltier than you would expect in a recipe, then it's the right salinity. If it tastes too salty, then you have too much salt. However, I'm gonna weigh out 2% of the 818 grams. And then I liberally sprinkle this over the cabbage. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. And here's another little tip that I do, and that is let the salt and thyme do its thing. So as I'm gonna put this by the side. The salt will draw out the moisture of and the juices out of the cabbage, and then it makes it a little bit easier later on to press the cabbage into my mason jar. So we're gonna set this aside while I will show you how I make the red cabbage and the red beet and the ginger. One of the disadvantages so to speak of not using a fresh head of cabbage is that you don't get the outer leaves to weigh your cabbage down when you use the pre-shredded cabbage so i'm peeling the outer leaves off of my cabbage here and set them aside i'm just going to use two leaves here and you can also, if they're damaged or not quite pretty or uh, slightly wilted, then you can also take those off and put them in your compost.
This is a very fresh, firm head of cabbage. This is exactly what we want for making sauerkraut. I will cut this in half and you will see that the head of cabbage is so fresh that it will kind of spring open. Usually I like to slice it into quarters. And then with a the mandolin, you want to be really careful because this is very sharp right here. And this one has two settings. I don't know if you can see it well in the camera, but this has a narrower setting. And if I take this out and place it on the other setting, I get wider slices. I actually like my sauerkraut to be a little bit softer and not quite so crunchy. And that is why I'm using the smaller setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shred the cabbage right into the bowl here. I throw out the cores. So here is the shredded cabbage. You see it's a very fine shred. That's exactly how I like it. If you don't have a mandolin slicer, you can absolutely use your hands. I'm gonna actually cut this later with my knife. And you can use uh, any kitchen knife, but it just won't be quite as regular probably. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, slice these other three cores as well. Here's all my shredded cabbage. It's actually quite a bit, but you'll be surprised how much it will come down once we put it in the mason jars. And in my experience, no matter how careful you are, you will always have cabbage flying around in your kitchen. So that's always going on for me. And you can already see from the red cabbage that my hands have acquired this purple hue. Now onto the red beet, I will put on gloves and preparing the beet, I'll cut off the top and peel the beet. And I'll just simply cut this in halves. Now for the beet, I'm gonna use the other insert here. That is the one that gives me tiny matchsticks. And slice the beet right into the cabbage. You can see how that's coming out and it's very fine. You always want to be really careful. These are very sharp. And then for the last bit, just so that I don't cut myself, I will use this thing that is a little bit worn out, but better than cutting my hands. I'll do that with the um, second one too. And the last thing I will use for this recipe is some fresh ginger that I will peel and add to this. I think I only need a little knob. You can leave out the ginger if that's not to your liking. I like the um, little kick from it that is a really nice contrast to the sweeter of 
And then I'll add this to the bowl as well. Now the interesting question is if my scale can still do this. I weighed the bowl earlier, but this is pretty heavy. Yeah, this is too heavy. So it turns out that I didn't prepare this as well as I would have liked. I don't have a scale that will weigh this really heavy ceramic bowl with my cabbage and my beets and my ginger in it. So I'm just gonna have to go by feel. And, but since I'm adding some of the whey as well, I think I will be good. And most recipes tell you a medium head of cabbage plus a tablespoon of salt. And you don't know how big that medium head of cabbage is. So I will just, actually I'm gonna weigh it because I know that this is more than my other one. So I'm gonna, and just know that different types of salt have a different density. So going by volume is not a very accurate measurement, but here I have 20 grams, which seems about right. And again, I'm sprinkling this over the cabbage here. And mixing it under so that the salt can begin to draw out some of the juices of the cabbage, which makes it a little bit easier later to press it into the mason jars. Now I'm giving you a cabbage sauerkraut recipe. Obviously you can ferment other vegetables. Just know that cabbage is one of those vegetables that's self brining, which means I will show you that in a moment that you will get a lot of brine when you when the salt has drawn out the juices out of the cabbage and other vegetables for fermenting, you need to add some water, but that's not what this recipe is about. And since we're already here, I will add three tablespoons of whey to this. Actually, this one is so much that I'm gonna add four tablespoons. This does not pour well. And again, we will set this aside while we'll continue with the other sauerkraut. So here's this one. The salt hasn't really drawn out a lot of juices. You can see there's a little glistening on the cabbage, but also it's a pretty coarse shred. And to this one, I'm adding three tablespoons of whey. This will give your good bacteria a kickstart, so to speak. Now what's really interesting is that in all likelihood, I will be able to fit all of this into one single mason jar. So let's try that. One thing I wanna add before I do that is some juniper berries. I always like the taste of them. And again, this is completely optional. So now I simply put everything into here. This cabbage actually feels really moist, so that's a good sign that the salt has drawn out the juices out of the cabbage. And here's your wooden tamper to press everything down. And this will also help break it up and you want to press it down as much as you can. In olden days, they used to actually stomp with their feet the sauerkraut down into the big barrels. And then I'll continue doing that until I've filled this jar. Let's see if we can put everything into one jar if we're gonna need another one.
this is what I wanted to show you. You can see that there's already a lot of juice coming out. This is the brine. And here we are. I told you that there's a good chance that I can fit this entire bowl of cabbage into one mason jar. You can see the brine on the top here. And this is the moment that we will add one of those cabbage leaves to keep the little pieces down. And you can just fold them and make them fit in there. it's very important that everything is submerged. I have some little pieces that escaped here. I'm going to take those out. And then I'll add my fermentation weights. So you can see that this is pretty full. I might take some of it off the top you do want a little bit of headspace because at some point this will expand a little bit. For this one I will use this fermentation top. It has this little valve so I'm going to fill this up with water here. See, there's a little bit of water. Screw the cap on and put this on tightly. That's why I have this rubber band around it because it makes it a little bit easier to open it later. Sometimes um, juices will come out of the top. That's why I like to set it in a little bowl like this. Again, here is my quick uh, fix sauerkraut with the pre-shredded cabbage from Trader Joe's and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the fermentation time here and what I will do with this now. Ideally you want to set this at about 72 degrees which is room temperature however in a dark spot. The bacteria that we want to encourage in here actually like it better when it's dark when they're not in the sunlight. Um, you could put a towel around it or something like that and this might be ready after three to six days and during those three to six days I encourage you not to open it not to let any oxygen in because that will encourage oxygen will encourage the bacteria that we don't want in there so we want this to be anaerobic which means without oxygen what I like to do is called long fermentation and after three to six days, I will put this in a much cooler place. Um, we have a crawl space underneath the house, which is kind of humid and somewhat cool, or you can maybe find a basement or some other cool place in your house and let this sit there for 30 days. After 30 days, you actually will have increased tremendously the amount of good bacteria in there that are so healthy. You still get them after three days, but after 30 days, you get even more of them and it will have a much deeper, uh, better taste. It won't be quite so salty. It will um, be just much better product. So that's why I always like to have several ferments going at the same time. So I always have something in Europe in the olden days, they would actually ferment their cabbage, their sauerkraut for maybe up to six months. Now, I don't do it quite that long, but you do want to keep it as cool as you can. Um, 50 to 40 degrees is ideal. And in the meantime, it can happen that there's um, juices coming out of this fermentation top here. And again, that's why I'm using this jar. Now, let me show you what I'm doing with the red cabbage, red beet ginger kraut. So actually it is ideal to let this sit for 
about an hour or so, but I can already see that there's a lot of, it looks very glossy and that's a good sign because it means that the salt has been begun to draw out the juices out of the cabbage. And we'll stir this up a little bit more. This was a big medium head of cabbage, so I want to mix this up that the uh, ginger is in there and the red beets. And just a quick tip about the taste, if you find that sauerkraut is too sour for your taste, you can always add an apple to it, which will totally mellow out the taste. And if you're not a fan of sauerkraut, then I really encourage you to try a recipe with an apple in it and see if you like that any better, because like I said, it is a little bit sweeter and a little bit mellower than straight cabbage. Now the beet has some sweetness and I absolutely love this one. Plus it will actually get a very striking red color once it's completely fermented. And now is the point where I transfer this to my mason jar. And it's the same process as with the other sauerkraut, putting it in there and then pressing it down with a tamper. And here you can see all the juices. There are red juices. I'm gonna switch my jars so that I have maybe an even amount of sauerkraut in each jar and again I'm using some cabbage leaves to keep the sauerkraut completely submerged River rocks to keep everything down. And then I'm going to use these other fermentation tops for this crowd. Here you have three jars of freshly made sauerkraut. Again, I will let them ferment at room temperature in a dark spot for probably five days or so because I've added the way I've already kickstarted the good bacteria into activation. And after that time, I will transfer them to a cooler, dark spot in our home to ferment them up to 30 days, after which time it is so much more teeming with good bacteria. And you can, you saw how easy it is to make this. You can make more batches so that you only need to do this once and you can set an entire afternoon aside for that and get a whole bunch of jars going and then you will be good to go for some months depending on how much you go through it. You can also use bigger mason jars, the half gallon sizes if that is what you would like to do or there's beautiful sauerkraut crocs that have a little bit of a rim that you can fill with water and then it has a specific lid that goes on top so it lets gases out but doesn't let air in. So there's different ways that you can do this. So here it is, very simple, how to make sauerkraut. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen and see you in the next video.